What up, FIFA Tears, and welcome to the Free Foot Tears podcast, sponsored by Manscaped. Use code Free Foot Tears to get 20% off at checkout and free shipping. More of that later on in the podcast. And as always, I am joined by Brad and Luke. How are you both doing? Doing good. Doing all right. Good. Had a nice day in the sunshine today at the coast. So yeah, feeling nice and refreshed, full of vitamin D. Yes, I mean, at the moment, it's very topsy-turvy, the weather in this country. It's get going from one day where it's like 30 degrees to the next day where it's either raining or just a bit dull when it's like 13 or mid-teens. It's very topsy-turvy at the moment. That is British weather for you, I think, to a T. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. But we are in the midst of Shapeshifters Team 2. And I think we're going to start off with a certain callback to last week and uh, CR7 making a return to Shapeshifters. And lo and behold, he has. He has. And he's currently sat at 10 mil on the market. Jeez, that is some serious big boy bucks right there for that. But other than him, there is pretty much returning faces from the last time that we had shapeshifters as well, with the likes of Sergio Ramos, uh, Marcel. I think Sergio Ramos was foot in birthday. last time. Marcelo foot was. Birthday, you're thinking of. Yeah, uh, foot birthday. Similar position change sort of situation, but Marcelo was. But yeah. What are you making of this team too? Uh, other than sort of like the the top top tier ones, I wasn't quite as enamoured by this one. Like. Obviously, in the sort of lower to mid tiers, you had like Mukiele and Kalulu and uh, players that still kind of like interest you a little bit. Like you, you, you got like a daily blend and things in this one, which doesn't quite appeal as much. I think. Um, obviously, probably your worst one was what Hector Bella in the last in the team one, and then it's like in terms of value. Yeah, and then yeah. it's now it's like a daily blend, which I think obviously given league and given. Like the just the, that card in general, I just don't think it, it quite looks as good. But that's maybe because they knew that they were going all out for like a striker Marcelo and the Ronaldo and things. So at the top end, I think it's better. But at the bottom end, it's probably worse. Luke, what are you thinking? Uh, I think it's fairly well balanced. You got some interesting ones. You get some depth in positions. So the only Argentine left back really that you could have in the Serie A, unless it's going really niche, was that foot birthday. Mm-hmm. What was his name? Uh, An Saudi. Now you got Pereira at left back. Arnautovic makes a good centre back. It's sort of appealing to those Eve revives Brad was asking for, having about yeah. a six foot five centre back from the Syria. I think mm-hmm. Blinds Blinds are alright. Like it's nothing to sort of be too overly happy about. You've got Tierney, Tierney at centre back, and I think he had. Did he already have an inform there? He's got an inform there. Yeah. But yeah. it's a much more juiced up version of that card. Mm-hmm. Looks very, very good. Only a hundred and something K for a Prem centre back. Can't be scoffed at. El Sharawi going back to his almost FIFA twelve style, whatever I'm, what everyone thought his frame was in FIFA twelve when he was actually seventy four. Played like a ninety five cam. And Danny Aarons has got his wish with Silas coming back. We know we Obviously. know that one. Yeah. I I, I I don't see where where the gripes are for this one. There's there's a lot of exciting players throughout. E- even down to five star, five star Jesus Corona at, as centre mid. Yeah, I mean to be fair, I did pack um, Pereira in my foot champ rewards, and I've been using him. Can't can't say he's that bad. I wouldn't say he's necessarily exceptional, but he does, does, does seem to be a solid option at left back with the fact that he can get the link to Dybala. And then I've done Chiellini as well, so I'm going to probably try something out on the left-hand side of my team for mm-hmm. that. And then you had the mini-release as well, so you got Emery Chan, uh, Thiago Mendes, and Adama Traore with a centre-forward card as well. So some additional sort of looking options. So if someone's got Paqueta, for instance, Mendes is a perfect link to him, so mm-hmm. there is a good, decent option there for people. And I've got to say, from I know this isn't related to foot, but I've used Emery Chan at centre back in online career mode. <laughs> uh, so it's like the, the normal team's version rather than foot. Yeah. But he was a solid option at centre back when I used him there. So 
could be a good viable option for those that are running the Bundesliga team. And then you've got some SBCs as well that we've had come out. So you've got the likes of Guerrero, who's got a option at centre mid and right back. So again, one of those sort of player pick options. You've got a choice there. And well, there you go, Emery Chan. If you get an Emery Chan, it might be worth doing Guerrero so that you can have a nice strong link option. Another one, Hervin Lozano is looking too good. And the requirements on him isn't too bad either. Because a lot of the SBCs at the moment require a team of the season or a team of the week in it. He does not require either. And I believe he's an 84 and 86. Yeah, oh no, an 85 and 86 rated squad. So not too expensive. So again, like maybe a soft link option to Corona for those that pack in. Yeah. But what are you looking at these uh, SBC cards? What do you think of those or even the objective players that have come out? Uh, so I am looking to try out Emerson. Um, I just want to see what he's like. Because obviously now you've got end of era Fernandinho come in. And they're, barely, I mean, they're both four star, four star. Fairly similar, just obviously Fernandinho stats are a bit boosted but obviously one is free i just kind of want to see what he's like before i consider maybe completing fernandinho um because i currently have the showdown tiago mendez as my cdm mm -hmm. um but any strong links to my neymar but i could actually hit a, a brazilian from the prem would fit in as well so i could replace him with emerson and fernandinho if they were better because the showdown mendez is only three star three star so it's just to upgrade that kind of weak foot just to help that, you know, with those passes that sometimes go astray and things like that, you know. So I'm I'm interested in trying out Emerson, see what he's like first, and then if I don't feel like he's that great, then I might go for the boosted end of era um, Fernandinho, who again looks, I think, like a fairly reasonably priced card considering his, um, you know, nation, links, Man City, etc., I would say his vision on that Emerson card is a little bit left to be desired at 80 at this sort of stage of FIFA when you see a lot of players in that sort of position having high passing, mm. I would say. And the, there's the other sort of gripe that a lot of people have, which is oh, the objective players, you complete them, use them in game, and then they don't feel that great. I mean, I know you have definitely had that with a few players like Ansu Fati. Yeah, for Ansu Fati being being my biggest surprise for me because every and, and still because like obviously when we had LCB on, he was talking about that card and obviously had a lot of good things to say about it. But for me, it's just he it just misses all the time. Um, I did try him out again in an episode of something else just to try it, and yeah, point blank range once again he was still missing uh, shots, and I just find it. You know, when you got, I think he's got 95 shooting. Um, so when you think that someone's in that kind of statistics for their shooting, you don't expect them to miss point blank range shots much. So, yeah, I don't, I, I weren't convinced with that one, but that's why I'd like to see or at least Emerson's, you know, we're free other than the fact that obviously it takes your time. So it's not all free in terms of that, but given it saves me putting what fodder and coins I would need to put into Fernandinho to try out another option that is free, then I'll, I'll try that first. It, it it's nice to have the option, especially as Fernandinho has got like 20 odd days left still. So, Yeah, exactly. That's the thing with the end of Eros. They've got plenty of time to complete them. So if you if you haven't done Fernandinho and you don't like Emerson, there's always that option there. Yeah, and I think it's That's nice like, in that like... sense because they're like of similar card. Like it's not obviously, there's not a lot where that is the case, but in this particular case, like it's nice to have the option. Luke, have you happened to do have done Emerson? Because I know you're the man who likes doing objective players. So I've, I've been back on my on my time off, but it is a card that's got me looking at it. Spurs, it's one of my players I don't like at Spurs naturally, but good yeah. links, four star, four star. It's someone I'd be interested in taking a look at. Uh, what do you think, my team? Uh, no, I'm I'm more on the league in these days than I am than I am Prem. Although I can practically build whatever I want with how much stuff I'd rather keep in my club. So, who's to say I don't suddenly decide to veer off and build that? But I, th I think my, my plans mm -hmm. are more round a man. You mentioned online career modes. My, my sights are more on a different objective. And that is Delaney. And that Danish centre-back who 
I believe he's still high low work rate or you know low high work rates, which is gonna be he's gonna be sitting right in front of that defence. Not not sort of drifting away too much, fairly committed at centre back, decent pace, you know, can whack a chem style on him and he'll he will do a job. Exactly. If you shove uh, I'd say probably the ideal situation is a shadow to maximise the pace. And then you've got a guy that is basically pretty much got maxed out defending. The only thing that hasn't got 99 is head and accuracy, which, let's face it, isn't probably that critical with it still being 97. Good aggression on it. Good jump in. And the fact that he could pass as well from the back is a good thing. Yeah. I was about to say, with me being with that much of a cheap scale, well. I might even go out and, and use a catalyst rather than buy a shadow card. So and then he definitely can pass. Other than that, that is well, we've got the usual sort of upgrade SBCs, but we've got pretty much a big event happening with swaps, and Luke is going to go a bit more into what has come out. Yes, so I avoided touching on it when talking about Delaney there. He's got one of these swaps in there. They're going for 50. They, they've jumped from, what is it, 27 normally, something like that? That they'll they'll put out for the team of the season swaps. What was it they went for? Yeah, something around that. It's it's usually in the high twenties, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And Nikon swaps is eighteen. They've they've gone and doubled the team of the season swap stuff to fifty. Yeah. I mean that's insane mm. in its own right. It's looks like it's combining a bit of icon swaps, a bit of bit of team well, shapeshifters in this case swaps. So for one, two, three, you get yourself. 82 times 25, 83 times 25, 84 times 25. You get a Schmeichel moments for four. But if someone's taking that, I, I want to <laughs> sort of check. Are they okay? <laughs> like, is, is everything all right in their life? They've got an 85 times 20 for five. Then you start getting into player picks. So you've got shapeshifter player pick for seven. A 91 plus top five league. I'm not going to say the acronym. Team of the season player pick for one in four. And then they decided on who the player that's getting the shapeshifter in this is going to be. And they decided on everyone's favourite centre-back, Kimpembe. So, we were being shapeshifter. He's not going to be at centre-back. I don't believe they've released the position he is yet. I could be wrong. I haven't seen I it. saw CDM. CDM is the one that would make the most sense. It, it reminds me, it's given me flashbacks to the nightmares I had of that Marquinhos freeze card from... Oh, that! I hated that. I hated that card, and I think people play. The thing is, if they, unless they unless they put him like very far forward, so we're talking striker, centre forward, left wing, right wing, people are playing this card at centre back in game anyway, aren't they? Regardless. One hundred percent. Yeah, that that's that's the problem. Or they just do the whole oh drop between defenders on CDM, yeah. so it's basically a centre mm -hmm. back anyway. So yeah, ten ten for a ninety two rated Kimpembe, and then you got fifteen. For a 93 plus Shapeshifters player pick, one of mm -hmm. five. Now I'll have to have a look at specifically who that gives you quickly. See if we can find any any any, any sort of stinkers that, that that you could just pick out instantly. Uh, 93 plus. No, I'm, I'm thinking of 92. I'm looking at. We're looking at Emre Chan, Pereira, St. Just. Yeah, Those are your prime Juiced, candidates. Yeah. Uh, Anderson, Robertson, Chris. He's just Corona, Kalulu, Tierney. There's, there's some proper good ones in at that level. You're not going to complain too much unless it's one of the first three you, you got mentioned there. 95 plus top five league team of the season player pick. One of five. And that's 17 tokens. 20 tokens for Moments Cafu, who wasn't he just in icon swaps like last time out for like, I'm going to say nine tokens or some something like that. It might have been the one yes. before. But. I think it was, yeah, I think it was like on swaps too, but still, like, he's been recycled. Yeah, be, being recycled at 20 for this, which is interesting. 95 plus player, th that's the one that's mental. Not, not, for 23 tokens, you get a 95 plus shapeshifters player pick, one of five. I'm just, I'm just going to have a look at how many 95s there are that aren't SBCs. 15 of them. So... You're so that actually makes it some... a one in three chance of getting Messi or Ronaldo. On paper. <laughs> on on paper. Yeah. 
realistically, you're going to probably get El Shirari, Spinozola, Silas, Aubameyang, Grealish. Something like that. Or you might get one big one, say a Alfonso Davies, maybe a, a Hazard, maybe a Marcelo if you're lucky, sort of pop up. But either way, that's what's there. And then a, almost like a step down, a 92 plus moments player pick for 25. It feels yeah, like that, a big that step down. That just seems weird. It feel, that feels like a yeah, big step I down. I think that should, have been worth, that should be worth less than the 23 option realistically well i get that like their thought there is like oh yeah but icons linked to everyone i get that but 92 is now what we're currently at in the sbc stage isn't it and mm -hmm. and yeah. i just think well if you want to make people worth grinding their time out for these tokens then it needs to be a step up from that sbc otherwise people will just do the tokens that gives them the fodder and if they really want to do the icon sbc then they'll do the icon sbc and yes, save some exactly. other tokens to get smokel very much <laughs> so 27 is the second version of Kimpembe so that is the 95 rated yep we can speculate whether that's the CDM or which one's what position you'd assume that one's CDM probably 96 mm -hmm. plus top 5 league team of the season player pick for 30 prime Ronaldinho not, not moments prime Ronaldinho which also wasn't that recycled I have a feeling that is yes. So yeah, a, a prime Ronaldinho because I know last season it was prime Hullet, and I feel the one before might have been Ronaldinho. So so the ninety six top five league one. Let's quickly take a spin over to there for top top five leagues team of the season. That that puts you in in the the ballpark of Mane, Berardi, Dybala, De Bruyne, Vlahovic, and Kunku, Suarez, Bellingham, Pedri, Immobile, Van Dijk. Vinny Jr., Neymar, Lewandowski, Messi, Kimmich, Salah, Ronaldo, Liao, Mbappe, Modric, Benzema. I would say the shapeshifters 95 plus is a better option. I think so. For. I it's think it's true. the most exciting. 100%. That's true. Mm. I think that's more exciting. But you can't. I, let me just double check. You can't do both. Sadly, they, they no. price that out by three. Right. Those wily, wily, wily buggers. Over at EA. <laughs> now, another one that's exciting is the 94 plus moments player pick. That one, it's a one in four. And looking at the 94 rated icons, there's a couple of ones that you're going, well, that's guaranteed in there. You, you can tell which ones you think is going to be. Van Basten, yeah. you, you're going to get your Berezi, your Baggio, your Puyol, Beckham, Xavi. Outside of them... I mean, you could have got your Cafu cheaper as well. But then you start to hit pretty much jackpots from there. Yeah. And then finally, number 40. I would not be doing this because I already have him. Moment Sedan for 40. Any preconceptions on what your plan is here, boys? It's the it's the shapeshifter pack, without a doubt. 23. Yeah. It seems the smartest thing to do. I mean, I'm going to try and do multiple of these because I hate myself so much and it's so much content that you know I always save myself for the really expensive ones and I hate myself for it but yeah, I, I think I think I'm going to be doing at least one of the 94 moments, at least one of the 96 and at least one of the 95 plus shapeshifter. I'm just going to cover the bases on the big packs. Yeah, That's, that's my plan. Across multiple have you ever had any that have been really like from those those icon playbooks? Have you ever had any that have been really bad? Because, like, sort of to shout out another person, I suppose Capcom Tom has sort of sworn by using your swap token packs to do these ones because the luck pack weight luck seems to be better. I say very false. I believe my ones. Hang on, let me just let me just try and recount my last one because I can't remember that one. But I know I got scammed in the first one. So they refunded me and then I got Prime Blanc, which is okay, but it's not ideal. And I'm trying to remember my previous one. Was that the Rivaldo? Was that SEN? What, the player pick? Or yeah, the player pick. Uh, oh, no, it would have been George Best because you guys got me to discard it. Oh, yeah, it was George Best. You, yeah, of course it was. Yeah. Strong words. Yeah. Mer's on his second then attempt. Then I got Zizou anyway from a general thing, so <laughs> it all worked out. Did you? 
did you have a loud drop in one of them? Like the refund one or the one? Uh, that... No, that was Nedved I got in the first one and then I got uh, Blonk in the refund. Yeah. So I've, I've not had the best luck from them, I'll be honest. I don't know, I remember the, yeah, the 95 obviously... plus one last year and getting the guaranteed Lev Yashin when I already had Lev Yashin. And that hurt. That hurt a lot. Because <laughs> like, I've seen him and he's obviously ended up with like Coifs, Hullets and Pele's, you know, and it's just like... I was trying to start to wonder. Well, are they are they more juiced than the SBCs? Like they not for me. It not, turns not for out me, not. Although I'm not someone to complain about pack luck at all this year. So just not when it comes to swaps. Swap. Yeah, no, leave, leave that to me. <laughs> yeah, that's your job. Your, your job's to <laughs> no, complain. It's definitely about my job this year. Happens. It has been absolutely terrible. But no, I think I want to do the I want to do the shapeshifter just because one I think is the most interesting. And it just gives you that that chance of getting that slightly different version of a Messi like Ronaldo. I mean, I'd even I would even like if I don't get them and I got like the Marcelo, that would be just a really nice, interesting card for me to want to get. I mean, Ronaldo, you know, you're talking it's unlikely now, especially given the fact that the the the, the craziest thing about this is compared to like previous years that Ronaldo shapeshifter is actually more expensive than Icon Moments Ronaldo. That is, Which that is, is quite crazy. you know, it's bizarre, but that is just. I think that I don't know whether that's because of where people, how people feel about that card in game now. Whether they think that this year that kind of more clunkier player doesn't suit. Because I've got to admit, I use if I've ever got R nine in a draft, I don't enjoy using him. I feel him very heavy um, when he's running. But yeah, I see other people obviously use him, and I've come up against him, and they tear me apart. So I think everyone will have their, their sort of different views on the, the better of the two cards. And obviously an icon does link to everyone. But the fact that, yeah, this Ronaldo is two mil more makes me think that there's obviously something special about this. So I'd like to get him in a draft and maybe in our upcoming uh, episode, if we do get him, I'll be able to try him out and see what he's like. Well, Joe, I, I've, I've just packed uh, an Arnautovic for my first 82 plus after Pack to the Future. Oh, wow. Anyway, that is all for the uh, for the swaps. But there's been some interesting attempts at swaps this week involving Barcelona and Man United, I believe. Yeah, so um, for some reason, Barcelona seemed interested in making Harry Maguire part of the Frankie de Jong deal. Um, and it wasn't as a minus, it was actually as, a, as an addition. Um, I thought they were like saying, no, this, this will come off the money, it'll be a negative money. But it's not, no, nope, they wanted him... Uh, as part of the deal and Man United have said no they do not want to get rid of Harry Maguire um, obviously we can't blame everything on him for their season like yes he made a lot of mistakes but so did a lot of other people in that team um, and now obviously they're going to go under a sort of a slight rebuilding process I've seen a thing here that says that they've got 100 million to spend um, no I don't include don't know whether that includes Players they've already targeted. We know that they're interested in, in, well, we've seen loads of rumours, haven't we? We've seen sort of him wanting to bring Timber, him wanting to bring Gravenberch, him wanting to bring Frankie De Jong. Um, I think there's even been others as well mentioned, Anthony but the one, Anthony as well, yeah. So, but then, you know, the the one that seems to be the biggest one they are pushing for at the moment is to get Frankie De Jong from Barcelona, which would be an incredible signing. But yeah, I think it was like sixty eight million. So I think they were trying to maybe uh, lessen the amount of money they would have to pay by seeing if they could get Harry Maguire because obviously Barcelona's financial state is not great. They've even, I think the, the, the negotiations with Lewandowski has even stalled now because Bayern Munich are basically saying they want 60 million and Barcelona just don't have that money. Um, so although he's agreed a deal, there isn't actually funds there at the moment to, to finance his... Um, his price so oh no no they do About have money because of, ages, I've par- apparently heard the, the, that Barcelona have sold 49.9% of the merchandising rights oh, right. and 25% of the TV re- revenue rights as well oh, okay. to basically get a big injection of cash so apparently they have got some money to do uh, transfers. However, the fact that they've sold 
some of their merchandising rights. Sounds like that's going to really affect them in the long term. Well, yeah, it's just because it's then limiting their future income, isn't it, I suppose? Exactly. So it might be like <laughs> they might get the players they want, but they're going to have to kind of stick with them for a while unless they end up getting some freeze or some academy um, mm. like promotions, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that seems to be the main one. Obviously, the, the big talk at the moment is that Gabby Jesus seems to have agreed a five-year deal with Arsenal. We've talked about it a couple of times. Um, and you've obviously given your take that you're not quite sure, but now it's looking like it's official. Do you feel any differently, or do you still sort of think the jury's out? No, and I think I've I've, I've now seen an interview that just makes it even worse for me, that apparently we're signing him to play striker. It's clear, Mm -hmm. right? He does not like playing striker. I've seen an interview that involved the Brazil manager who was talking about Gabi Jesus and, uh, and his time in the squad and when he was at striker and apparently he spoke to Gabi Jesus and he said, hey, guy, you need to be a bit, bit more productive. Do you not seem to like playing striker? And apparently Gabi Jesus said, no, he doesn't like playing striker. He prefers playing right wing. And if you look back to last season, most of his goal production or assist production came off that right-hand side because he did get played quite a lot on right wing but the problem is is we don't need him at right wing he's not really going to fit in at right wing especially with the fact that Arsenal are apparently trying to get a uh, pursue Rafinha yes, I saw from that today. Leeds yeah. as well so you've got Saka I mean you've got plenty of Arsenal players right now that can play out on the wing yeah. Gabby Jesus is not really going to play there no. so that again reinforces my statement that I just don't think he's going to be that productive at striker for us, especially if that's not where he wants to be playing. No, no, I do get that, I, and that, and it is what you need, isn't it, an out and out striker? So if he's not mm-hmm. convinced, if he's not fully convinced to be happy to be playing that role, then maybe he's not the guy for you. But yeah, jury's out. We'll soon find out. At least he's, I suppose, in a way, Premier League proven, rather than taking a risk on someone. But yeah, it, he's been a bit more mm-hmm. flexible in his role at Man City over the last couple of seasons, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, Liverpool seem confident of signing Borussia Dortmund England midfielder Jude Bellingham. I think everyone wants to see that guy in the Prem. Do they want to see him at Liverpool? Oh, they want to see him at their own club, obviously. You know, let's, let's not yeah. mess about here. You want to see people... a good play at your own club. You don't want to see him at And if they final. don't, no one really likes Liverpool, do they? Not really. It seems to be the sort of general... I mean, they're not my favourite team just because they beat beat Spurs in the Champions League final. But you know, I don't hold grudges. Um, the next sort of rumours. So these are all like obviously these are gossip rumours, things and like that. We'll get onto the official signings just in a second. West Ham look like they're interested in signing Ward Prowse. Um, I think that would be quite damaging to Southampton if they lose him. Incredibly damaging. Um, yes. But maybe good for him in terms of his England hopes a little bit. West Ham are kicking on a bit more now. I don't think it will help that much. I mean, the only reason he would be considered for an England uh, squad is more because of his set-piece speciality. Potentially, yeah. I mean, if he switched to a CDM, he'd probably get more of a shot, wouldn't he? Um, we then got... West Ham also seemed to be, um, as of, well, on the 1st of July, seemed pretty nailed on to get uh, future star Jesse Lingard uh, on a free transfer. That's so, not shocking in the slightest. That's the... No, he had a good time there, didn't he, for his little loan spell? Uh, he, he did all right. He, he, he yep. did. I thought, I thought there was some sort of teething issues with his demands. I could be wrong. I'm pretty certain he's asking Poten- for a fair, fair bit. Potentially. Potentially. Okay, and then the other thing, uh, one of the other things on there is Ericsson. So it looks like you are fully kind of out of the out of the hunt now for him. Yeah, and I, th- I think that's honestly a shame. I, I do I do like Christian Eriksen from from his previous time at Spurs. I think he is the kind of player that we need, honestly. So when you look at where Spurs are dropping points last season, it was less against both. It was hardly against Liverpool and City. We dropped four points against them, I think, combined. Yeah. It was more against the low block. So if you're looking to break through a low block, Spurs are playing three four three. I think you look to play something like a 3-5-2 in that situation. You want sort of a creative midfielder, an attacking midfielder 
to play those killer passes through the low block. Yeah. That's what you need, and that's what Ericsson would have brought. So I think it's a shame we've dropped out from him, but it is what it is, I guess. It, I've seen like the two kind of main teams going for him are obviously Man United and Brentford. I, I assume you'd want him to stay at Brentford rather than go to one of your rivals. I mean, I'm just happy to still see him playing football, honestly. If he, if he goes yes, to United and has yeah. success, fair play to him. I don't get bitter when someone leaves Tottenham, like... I wish Carl Walker the best. I wish everyone not named Sol Campbell the best. <laughs> and, you know, it, fair play to him. If he, if he gets trophies, if he does well, credit to him. Um, next one on there, it looks like West Ham are approached about signing Dan Juma. Um, so, obviously, he's at Villarreal, had some time at Bournemouth. Mm-hmm. I, looks like a very good player. Um, I'd be surprised if West Ham if he is available to be signed, would be one of the only players, uh, one of the only teams to be going for him, to be fair. I think if other other sort of... not, I'm not saying that West Ham aren't the top club, because obviously they are pushing on, like I just said. But I would I would think that he'd fit into some other sort of top top four, top five sides. Yeah, uh, he. but the other thing is he's only been up Villarreal for one year as well. So... I don't know how much he would be on a radar for a lot of bigger teams. Yeah, there's no but there's no he, price here either. Yeah, exactly. I think he's probably more someone that would be potentially even likes of a Newcastle if, like, if they can get him for cheap if they're looking to because obviously Newcastle got the money so they can go out and buy a few things that might be the type of acquisition they could potentially look up. Yeah, to be fair, that's true. Sure, I Maybe have then. seen one signing for Newcastle, potentially. I think I've seen yeah. they've completed a medical on Botman. Oh, have they? I, okay. I believe yes. I've seen reports of a medical being completed. So, looks like Sven Botman is going to Newcastle. Okay. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen him, don't know much about him. Obviously, I know he's got a future stars card, and that's about my knowledge on him. Um, I'll, I'll jump down and we'll talk about uh, a confirmed one with them. They did get Nick Pope. I think that's a great sign, and, and certainly probably the cleverer bit of business that they might do in this window given uh, the price it's a very good price I mean th- I will give you that 10 yes. million but Botman's one as you say future star you, you know that purely because of FIFA he helped, yeah, win, exactly. he helped win the league for Lille last year alongside a 36 year old Jose Font yeah so he's, Is, he's, was it him or was it that Portuguese guy because I don't really know like it was him it was him, was it? It was, it yeah. was him. That, that, that Portuguese guy, I, I know who you mean. You're talking about Thiago Di Giallo. I, yes. That's the one I hear nothing about. I, okay. I don't know nothing about him. But Botman was, was, was fairly influential. We then got um, Tottenham inquiring about Vardiol, uh, centre-back from Leipzig. Uh, yeah. Again, a player that I've not seen play, but apparently as a lightning-paced centre-back. Yeah, so it's what we, we need... He's, I'm, I believe he only joined last year to Leipzig. So I think I think, I think think Leipzig bought him from Dynamo Zagreb. Okay. The year before. Could be wrong. It might have been the year before that. Not yeah, because I saw he was on. He was definitely at Leipzig for FIFA last year. But. Then it was in the year before that then. So he's a left-sided centre-back, left-footed centre-back, which is what Tottenham need. As yeah. much as Ben Davies did okay last year, we, we, we don't need okay at the moment. Mm-hmm. People tipping us for a title charge, I think, are idiots. But with the signings we're making, it makes us a little bit more credible and more 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 about hopefully trying to solidify top four than than sort of getting your hopes up and going, oh, Spurs can win the league. So, yeah, so can Leicester, so can Nottingham Forest. They can all win the league, but realistically, it's only be one in two. Yeah, it has sort of become, well, yeah, and and soon it'll as soon as. Um, sort of like we say, a Newcastle get more and more um, sort of big signings under the belt, then it'll soon be a one of three, won't it? Um, but yeah, hopefully that's a, f- a few years off yet. But to touch on Spurs rumours as well, there is one other rumour that's just a bit weird. I, I got thrown off by it just a little bit, is that Spurs are in for possibly a double, or inquiring about a double swoop at Everton. Oh, right. So they're. Previously, we were in for Richarlison, but supposedly also inquiring about Anthony Gordon now as well. So, 
not okay. convinced that we should be doing this. But that's supposedly what Spurs are looking at at the moment. I mean, he's he looks, but he looks like he will. He reminds me at the moment, but that's because of just probably how um, he's had to for Everton to kind of get things going. He looks a bit like a, a James Milner, like he just doesn't stop um, in a game. But then, like I say, that might be because he's not really had much choice if Everton want to try and stop losing games this year. Um, but yeah, he's still young. He's obviously, again, another future prospect, isn't he? So maybe it wouldn't be bad. Maybe as a nice rotation player to give you an option, but... Yeah, that is interesting. Um, the other, the other Everton player you said was Richarlison. Richarlison. Do you think he will? Like, obviously, I'd, I'd seen the first rumor was like Arsenal. Do you think he will move away regardless? Now, do you think like it's kind of a this that was his last year? Do you think even if he doesn't find someone in the Premier League, that maybe he'll get snapped up elsewhere? Um, I'm trying to think where would snap him up though elsewhere. I think the price tag's sixty million, if I recall. Mm, it's a lot of money. So it's, it's a lot of money for a Richarlison. I mean, do you think that maybe the like Brazilian influence of uh, Rodrigo and Vinicius could maybe tempt him towards Real Madrid? Do Real Madrid need him? They were looking. Well, they were looking for Mbappe, weren't they? And they haven't signed a striker. Yeah, but that's not a, a Mbappe level. Uh, Alternative, let's be fair. Is there one though? Does Not such a really, thing exist? But... but it's probably better than Richardson available. They'd inquire shortly about. They'd probably inquire about Kane before they inquire about bloody Richardson. Yeah, yeah, true. and I think Richardson's mainly been linked with Barcelona whenever he's been linked with a Spanish club more than anything. Yeah, weren't they willing to offer like? I'm going to say eighty million. Oh. Last year or the year before, I know he's definitely linked with Barcelona for for an outrageous amount, and and they said no. Hmm. I think they should have done it in hindsight, but um. And then I've just seen as well another Leipzig player looking to come to the Prem. Actually, Leeds have inquired about um Tyler Adams. Oh yeah, well they're they're linking an American manager of an American player. No way. Yeah. Now, is this because... Oh, so, I didn't... I haven't officially seen this, but is this because of Calvin Phillips? You'd think. You'd, you'd think it's Calvin Phillips' replacement was it 40 mil, roughly? 42? I think he was on his way to Man City for, which... What is your opinion on that deal? I think it's a good sign, realistically. Do you, though? City. Yeah. The, my, only, yeah. My, only, my only concern about it mm-hmm. is... It's just that it's it's the caliber of club. That's my that's my concern about it. Is he really a top two Premier League CDM? Okay. He, I don't he know. Managed to get top two at a Euros as a CDM. Was yeah, Jordan but, Henderson a top two club player when he was at Sunderland? I mean, I, I, that's way before. I've only ever really really seen him at Liverpool. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it was, it was, this is 2011. But my point being, you you can't sort of prejudge someone's club where they're at certain players can play well under certain managers they need a Fernandinho replacement since he's now out the door so they've yeah, got yeah, a yeah. holding I, midfielder that's I know they need I know they need a deal I just don't know whether he is a Man City calibre type player I saw like nah, like we talked you. about like on when on the LCB was on didn't we about the Grealish side of things like he said that he reckons in a few years time Grealish will find his way back to Villa because he don't think he'll fit in, um, fit in like into Man City, um, you know it's is is it is that another is I just wonder if this is another case of that. No, be. I f- yeah, but the problem is it's a Grealish is an attacking player versus the CDM talk here. So although yes, they need to fit into the same system. However, Grealish doesn't fit the attacking ethos. Of Man City, no. Cal- but I would Man argue Phillips. a CDM is a, a more important role than, like, like in terms of what they have to com- they have to sort of command the game. They have to be playmakers. Mm-hmm. I just, I just, which he can I don't do. Know. I don't I know. About, I just what think about, what Cal- game makes you doubt him? Is 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 my 
sort of retort here. What, yeah. what have you seen in Calvin Phillips that makes you doubt his ability? It's nothing that I'm, I'm, I'm doubting his ability. I just think I'm, doubt, I'm doubting his ability for that caliber of team. That's all. I think there's probably better CDMs out there. Okay, name name somebody if you can think of somebody that would have been available um, for Man City. I'd have to. Four I'd have to have a think. Fifty. I'd... All right, we'll try and come back to it during this episode then. I, I'd predict yeah. it would be someone like already a sure many rivaling Real Madrid for a hundred mil. Bear, bear in mind, that'd be a sixty mil difference for uh, for a sort of young and non-league proven. You've got to think what you're getting for this price. 40, 42 million for a player that's used to the league now, played in it for, for two years. Got to a final as a starting CDM in, uh, in, in the Euros. So, it's to me, it seems like a fair price, all, all things considered. 42 million for, for a player who has potential to get better whilst also currently being at a decent enough level. Well, we'll have to see. I mean, the deal's not the deal's not done, is it, yet? By any means, but it looks it looks likely. Uh, as you say, Fernandinho is on his way out. Um, has had a stellar career for Man City, um, but he was, you know, he isn't. He's he's certainly ticking on now. Um, and then there's a couple of others. So talking of ticking on, I mean, he's not the oldest player in the world, but um, there's been some talk about Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm-hmm. To yes. Chelsea, um, I find that strange. I mean, if obviously Man United could help it, they certainly. I would say they wouldn't sign to a rival, but then we know that that doesn't always happen because Mata went to to Chelsea. Matic, uh, sorry, Mata went to Man United. Uh, Matic went to Man United. So, if the business is there to be done, I don't think people do value that much as they used to. Maybe. Um, the problem that you got is there is that the guy, even at thirty seven, is still gonna perform at a very good level and the last thing you want is having him score a a very important goal against you when you've just sold him off, but it might the decision will probably more than likely be taken out of their hands anyway. I uh, imagine it'd be much down to Ronaldo, uh, as to whether he wants to stay in the Prem, whether he wants to maybe go back abroad, get the sunshine, um, or more than the sort of four weeks that we get here. Um, but I don't, I don't know. It seems he's loved by he's loved by English fans, isn't he? So I don't think that's the problem. I think it would just be the the lifestyle of living and whether he really wants to be here anymore, as he now probably enters that final final part of his career. Yeah, I mean, he was linked with Bayern Munich. I believe his agent offered him to Bayern Munich, in which Bayern Munich declined. I suppose it's because of that thing, isn't it? You're getting rid of a. Do you, is that thing of you getting rid of an aging striker to bring in another one when actually your sights are set more on? Um, although Mane is not exactly young, young, he's still probably got a good few years in him. Yeah, he's 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 only, I believe, thirty. He's twenty. Mane. No, thirty, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he's gonna say he's twenty nine, but I think he's thirty. Oh, I believe the whole of that that sort of Liverpool front three that that dynasty is is now thirty. PSG have also stated that they don't have any need for Neymar anymore yeah that's a Which... huge one where where do you go with Neymar they're, they're, uh, yes. I've heard they've attempted to loan him out that's the rumour I've heard they, they they supposedly offered him to a quote major club on loan was the only rumour I've heard of him so far which is outrageous well yeah because you can only imagine how much his wages are he's not going to maybe take much of a pay cut I would say. He doesn't strike me as the sort of person to take too much of a pay cut. But yeah, is there really is there really that many clubs in the world Europe, I suppose would rather, that can really afford this guy? The list has no, got to be short, really. hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's elite clubs only. Let's and face it. Yeah. I wonder if it's um, club president Mbappe who's uh, making the decision behind yeah. this. Yes, his new... Was um, afford his new contract, they have to offload Neymar, I think it was... His new role, yeah. as it were, his new role to be able to have some decisions on who they sign and maybe who they also get out of the door. Who knows? Who knows? 
Um, you'd think if that would be the case, then he'd probably want to see Messi go off as well, wouldn't he? So he can really be the number, the number one guy. Potentially, but then he probably sees Messi not being there for much longer anyway. So no, I don't even I don't know how old Neymar is actually. Is he like? He's got to be Neymar's near gonna be. Gonna he's got to be near in thirty, isn't he? You think? Without without having to physically check at the moment, because yeah, I would say he's got to be. He's got to be in and around that mark. So, again, another player who hasn't got that long left in him. But he's also a player that, like, I always find... He, he reminds me, and there's someone else I'm going to talk about in a second, of, like, the kind of Paul Pogba. Like, when you get the best out of him, he's brilliant. But sometimes he's he's not very good. And when he's not very good and can't be bothered, he's, you know, he really... It really makes a difference. And also, when... um. Like Pogba, you know, when he sort of just decides that, I don't know, decides that he's had enough, it definitely emanates in his performance. And then also on top of that with Neymar, you've got his uh, cough, cough theatrical record. side. Um, you, you've so, also got his, his injury record that seems to always happen around the same time each year. <laughs> and he seems to always pop up at the carnival in Brazil. Magically okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he is 30, to confirm, exactly 30. He is, yeah. I thought, I thought he must be near. So, yeah, who knows? If he is having to go out the door, I don't, like I say, I don't think there's many people that are going to be able to afford that price ticket of his wages. But, hey, if we did see him in the Prem, I suppose it's exciting. Um, however many weeks we get to see him perform for or roll around for or exactly. whatever it At that may point, be. He might be in contention for being the greatest of all time just because he's played in the Premier League. Who knows? He might, he might have to enter the conversation instead of uh, instead of Messi. Um, but yeah, Paul Pogba looks like it's pretty much done. I think Juventus are getting ready to announce him as um, as a, a new slash old signing um, fairly soon. From what I was read, mm. doesn't on a free yet again as well. Yeah, it's actually crazy. You pay it 90, is crazy. You pay ninety million just to give him to the same club free twice. Good business, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's that's uh, that's Man United for you. Um, and then the only other sort of confirmed signing we saw was we, we talked about previously before this was uh, Gareth Bale. Um, there was some talk about him going to Cardiff. I don't know how serious that was. I think that was just wishful thinking, maybe for for Welsh fans. Uh, but yeah, generally th- that wasn't going to happen. His wages are too high. I don't know how much he's going to get paid at LAFC. Um, but that signifies to me a wind down in career playing MLS football certainly. Um, mm-hmm. I'm surprised he didn't like go to like uh, into Miami, although I don't know whether they've actually really sort of done very well since they've formed. I'm pretty certain they've done fairly badly. But do you know who this this could be a problem for? Carlos Vela. Yeah, Mexico. Hmm. Suddenly, Carlos Vela. The right winger for LAFC. I know he had a striker card for player of the month probably like f- three, four years ago now. Remember when MLS had player of the month? Do you remember those that yeah, those days? Carlos Vela will probably have to play striker now because you want Bale to be in his natural position for Wales. I imagine so. Because Kiefer Moore plays strike for them, I believe, for Wales. So they're going to want to stick to that sort of a, of a plan. Yeah. So Carlos Vela is probably going to have to go back to striker. Might have to make way. But I think that pretty much concludes like all the main rumours and potential signings and signings at the moment. Um, so maybe we'll just have a look at some questions. We Possibly. have uh, we have got some questions and we've got the food-based questions oh, of return okay. as well. So yesterday, you've seen this anyway. So GH posted a picture in our discord he wants us to rate this chocolate bar out and so for those that can't see it it is a swizzles drumstick chocolate bar so basically if anyone doesn't know what the swizzles drumstick is it's basically a sort of chewy lolly that is yeah, predominantly raspberry and milk flavored but they do have other sort of flavors as well but it's the raspberry and the milk flavor that is the predominant flavor that they do and they've turned it into a filling and put in 
some chocolate, basically. So he brought five bars for a pound, I believe. And he's like going on about it. It's like it it's like the messy of chocolate bars. Oh dear God! And what, it's getting put into a into a SBC. <laughs> yes, <laughs> SBC. But what do you think? I I know we've had chocolate discussions in the past, but what what do you think of a, a Swizzle's drumstick chocolate bar? So I we got. For some reason, we found ourselves with one. I don't know why. Didn't definitely didn't buy it, and it tells me a lot. Gh, why this was five for a quid. Um, yeah, I don't know why we acquired it. We literally both took a bite out of it and got. It's it's that confusing taste. You'll know what I mean if like if you can get on a level with me on this. So I really like Pepsi Max Cherry. Right, other drinks are available. Mm-hmm. I tried. I accidentally the other day picked up a Pepsi Max raspberry. It does okay. not taste right. There's something about certain combination of flavors that just don't taste right. Um, another one for me would be like vanilla Coke. I don't know if you guys ever tried that. Some people might like it. Like I think they acquired tastes. But so it I, it reminded me of that of this where I was like, no, these two don't go together. It's not good in my mouth. Um, I don't even know whether I swallowed it. Um, so. Yeah, for me, that is it is not a good combination, and and you know they're not renowned for making their chocolate. They don't make chocolate; they make sweets. So you've gone for it. There's a subpar chocolate with a with a. Don't get me wrong. I, you know the um, drumsticks were legendary. Like you say, the original OG flavor has always been the raspberry milkshake kind of flavor, um, and it is nice. But sticking some chocolate around it just wasn't a good idea. I wonder if someone had one one time or at a, like a wedding. And they dipped them in the chocolate fountain, and someone thought, "Do you know what? It's all right." Yeah, it's a bit of a weird thing to see that a sweet company and chocolate mixed together. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes they can work, but I don't know. I asked. I did have to ask GH whether it's manufactured buy swizzles themselves or if they contracted it out to somebody else right and making it on behalf because i can't see them having the facilities to make a chocolate bar in their own factory for it if they're a sweet factory but then again they could probably do it but yeah it doesn't <sighs> intrigue me like if i see it on the shelf in amongst all the other chocolate bars i'm not gonna be like hmm Oh, I'm going to buy it unless, like, in similar situation that, yes, GH, five for a pound. If it's 20p, okay, I might try it. Yeah. But for a the, pound. This is, this is going to, this is going to basically now, and I don't mean to offend anybody here, but this is now going to tell me everything that I need to know about it. I've searched Swizzles chocolate just to basically see if there is, like, actually just pure chocolate that Swizzles do. And the first thing that come up is BM stores, B and M stores selling this chocolate bar. So it looks like I know where you got it from. That tells me everything I need to know. No offense to anybody that shops at B and M, but basically you generally get the lower end stuff at that at that, at that kind of price. Um, yep, nineteen pence. Um, so actually, here you've got five p change for that. Um, I'm not. Yeah. So that tells me these 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 are the ones for me. Like if you ever get it when you go to a garage to get your fuel and things, where like they're pushing it at the till. I'm always where I do, uh, no, he didn't buy it from there. He said he brought it from a store that specialises in products that are going out of date or out are out of date. I mean, I it like, seems very convenient that I've just found it on B and M for nineteen p. I mean, to be fair, it, I mean, I'm, I'm hardly it, ever going to judge anyone for what shop they they, they sort. Of no, no, that's to. what that's I mean, uh, and I don't. But I mean, um, you, are, you literally yeah. are, though. You you quite literally are. I mean, I shopped at B and M last week. How dare you insult me? <laughs> no, I just mean that like that that is that is like they're not renowned for they're not like a big chain supermarket or renowned for selling their. Um, you know, selling their chocolate. They're generally a, a store for everything uh, that, that is currently either struggling to sell or they can get for a bargain. And so that 
is obviously falls under that category. All right, Trips, put down the shovel. Stop digging. What about you? Does this uh, sort of sort of chocolate bar tickle your fancy, Luke? No, I'm not really sort of the biggest fan generally of of those sort of sweets when I was growing up. I was okay. Ne- never sort of liked that personally. So for that reason, I, I'd, I'd say I wouldn't wouldn't sort of be on on that sort of <coughs> on that sort of thing, but. Yeah, it just doesn't doesn't look like it's for me. I was, I was never, I was just more into a just just general chocolate or something. Not, I was less sweet, more chocolate. Yeah, and I think that's the thing when you, when like I don't know about everybody, but there's for me when you like we want a chocolate bar, I don't necessarily want it to be like ninety percent filled with something like this. I just want chocolate, maybe with a bit of like I, I really love a crunch. Um. You know, so like just something with like just a little bit of that, like a rice crispy in or a or a fruit and nut as we all know, or something just like a little bit like that, but really it needs to be like ninety five percent chocolate. Whereas these I think are more like a fifty fifty, if not it's even more on the other side. I'm not getting back into fruit and nut gate. I'm I'm not getting back into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that. That 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 can be found in a previous episode. I can't remember which episode. Uh, it was I'm early sure on. It was early doors. Different. It's in the first ten. Yes. It's in the first ten. If I had to guess, episode Some... seven. Somewhere near Pizzagate. Going on to the next one, which comes from Dan Laguna. He's asking, what is our favourite snack food? So it could be a group or if you've got a specific snack, that is your go-to snack. What what are we saying? Just recently, of like, oh, this is this the thing though? Is it like, do you do you think snacks are like things that you have just to tie you over to like dinner, or do you think some snacks are just some things that you sometimes graze on? Because at the moment, recently, I've been like enjoying just grazing on like mixed fruit and nut bags, you know, like so bags. For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean, like so, like so, like bags of bag, basically a bag of mixed nuts and raisins, essentially. Um, but that isn't going to obviously fill me up. It's just something I'm enjoying, like grazing on while I'm at work and things. I'll stick them in a tub and and you know try some and and and, and sort of eat them during the day. But if I think about like a, a snack to like really sort of tie me over, then I'd probably I don't know, probably would always have been like. A, some sort of bag of crisps or crisps and dip or something like that yeah i think snack is in like graze on rather than actual trying to do a, a, a structured yeah snack to fill you up so i mean Luke, i mean what, what i fill you? myself up on throughout the day uh, is, is is i just sandwiches i'll just, just make myself a sandwich I, I really need to stop but yeah Cut, cutting that out will help me actually finally start to lose weight yeah, I now no longer eat bread. I don't think I'm going that far, but I'm Four I only have it in the morning with uh with with the scrambled egg or something. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sort of uh again other other providers are available, but sort of closely following uh the sort of slimming world diets things and yeah, bread on that are super bad. So yeah, that's kind of where where we're at in this house. So we literally yeah, I haven't haven't really missed it much because like for lunches you can have like some really nice fuller meals like pastory type meals and things and stuff so um yeah in that sense we've not really missed it but like you say i, I do that is it's always nice to have a toast in the morning or if we were to go and have because you can have like a a version of as such of a full english breakfast i would miss the toast from that i like mean that, I, would, that I, would is where I would like to have that i would miss fried bread so much from that do, mm. do love a bit of fried bread with a full english as for grazing snack wise, I mean, again, I'm sort of like in that sort of situation where I'm trying to watch what I'm eating, calories and stuff. So trying to cut down on crisps. So crisps was the main thing that I would snack on because I could easily like consume probably like four packets a day easily of crisps. So I've tried to switch them out for popcorn instead, but and also oh, yeah. cut down like popcorn to maybe so one packet. So proper corn, sweet and salty. Oh yeah, popcorn. 
I was then going to pose a question, and you've just answered it for yourself. Um, what what popcorn do you go for? For me, it is sweet and salty. I love it. Just salty for me. Just salty. Just salty. Yeah, I used to eat like loads of the butter kissed toffee. Oh, the popcorn. toffee ones. Oh god, they're super yeah. sweet. Yeah. Yeah. No, not for me. But no. Ever since I came across the pop proper corn, sweet and salty. That is just yeah, so lovely that stuff. Yeah, so. and that was my choice if I go to cinema as well to have sweet and salty, definitely. Matt, yeah, Matt, mine same. is just pure pure salt. I'm I'm more a savoury kind of person than uh, mm-hmm. these days than a than a sweet person. You, you can tell by my personality. <laughs> He's a bit salty. <laughs> no, no, just uh, it's not sweet. Uh, then going on to the next question, which comes from Flint, he says. With Newcastle being very active in the tra- transfer window, how much do you guys think Newcastle will spend, and where will they finish considering in f- form at the end of the season? Newcastle were third in the form table from January mm-hmm. with Eddie Howe, and who else will Newcastle bring in? So. What what are you guys thinking? Where will Newcastle finish next season? And do you think they will sign many more players? And do you think you might predict who they might sign? Neymar. No, I'm joking. <laughs> okay. um, no. no, I mean they probably will make some more moves, won't they? I don't think, like I said, I think it's going to be a few years before they're really challenging for top four, because obviously they can't just mm-hmm. go and buy the like what they want. Um, it's got to always be obviously within the reason at the moment, but. Yeah, give it three years. They'll be they'll be a, it'll be a top three that we're talking about, and they'll they'll be part of it. Unfortunately, um, that's just how the game is. Well, it is unfortunately because it's just it's just it is buying the league, isn't it? We know that. Um, well, whilst true, they they should have won a league in the nineties. They they're a team that's not won the league when they really should have. Yeah, but it's it a different, down to- different football era now, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a team of heritage at least. It's ones that have got some great players in their time before it's happened. Yeah, yeah. Like if it's going to happen to a team, you're kind of happy it's happened to a team like Newcastle. So, I'm not yeah. going to sort of go in and be spiteful and go, "Oh, they're buying the league." Oh, throw it, throw well, it's not spiteful. It's a fact, isn't it? It's not spiteful. It is a fact. They well, wouldn't the be able to buy these the players. League, they're, they're slowly building their way up. No, it's not, it's that not is buying the league, though, isn't it? They wouldn't be able to afford these players that they're buying now if they well, didn't be they, taking. They, if they would be able over. to. Afford they're not be able to afford. Day. They're not able to afford ten million for for Nick Pope. They're not able to afford. What was it? Fifteen, twenty million for Dan Byrne. Trippier wasn't expensive either. No, like they've like not really made an expensive signing. I don't know how much Bruno Gamareas was, but that's. I think what forty million at most. That might not even be a record record signing. I think Jolinton might still be. So if yeah, they so if they could afford the to do this, yet. if they could afford to have done this before, why is it only now after they've been bought Mike and Ashley. taken over? Mike Ashley, yeah. easy. That that's simply the reason why they didn't spend is because Mike Ashley was a tight fisted so and so all right here's a pe- here's a quick question i'll pose to you now so because spurs this year have started to actually spend money if somehow we win the league this year would we have bought the league similar with arsenal because, because we spent 150 last year. last season and we're looking to spend that again what you the definition of buying the league because someone wasn't previously able to spend that money because levy had it under lock and key for freaking god knows how long if Spurs suddenly win the league, have they bought the league? No, because you haven't had a sudden multi-billion pound takeover. Yeah, but the money's already there at Newcastle, regardless of the Saudis, because of what the frivolousness of Mike Ashley. It's just a case of new owners have come in. Yes, the new owners are the richest. super rich, and they've just unlocked the key and said, "Hey, there you go. You can now spend the money." So, you, so you think that they, you think that. Basically, At the moment, it's like a project. if they if they didn't if they didn't say to them you could um, spend as much money as you want because we're super rich, they would still have gone and kicked on and be fighting for the league. Well, uh, well, just, no. If they 
spent money. But the, the other thing is, is you've got the financial fair play, so they can't throw money at it. Like Man City were once they have, um, started doing that. However, I'm going to now talk about a video that I've seen and talking about like when Man City first got taken over by the Sheikhs, yeah. and Sheikh Mansour. They are doing exactly what Newcastle are doing now. They can't go out and buy big players because yes. they don't have the reputation to do it. So they're doing stepping stone yeah. players. So they're building up the reputation. They're building up the progress to go up the table. And then in, say, like three or four years' time, then they can start buying potentially the big names because then they've got the success yeah. to go with it. And they've brought themselves the reputation and even when Man City first won the first title, they had spent a little bit like they brought Robinho. Robinho. Robinho, yeah. but he flopped anyway. A lot of those core players were actually brought on the cheap. They weren't like super expensive signings. Well, at the time, they could probably consider the expensive. I mean, you got, yeah, you've got, you got to try and put them into today's market of money. Mm. But yeah. But that is that is exactly what I was saying then, isn't it? So they wouldn't have been able to do that if they didn't have the money, which was from a takeover, to build like that. And that's exactly what's happened to Newcastle. Okay. They wouldn't yeah, be able to build in the way they're going to do it over three years' time if they didn't have a takeover. So yes, in three or four years' time when they do fight for the league, they might not win it because they're still going to be in competition with the likes of Liverpool and, and Man City. But when they do get there, if they do win it, yes, of course they bought the league. But then again, let's let's hypothetically say in a different situation, Newcastle still got brought, but instead of them getting brought by the Saudis, they got brought by a lesser rich conglomeration or say they got by someone the size of Leicester. That sort of still size is his own sort of thing. Yeah, Yeah. and then still went out and brought the same players. And then had the same project and the same like progress. Is that then buying the league? Yes. If, if they win, but I don't understand the question because it's still the same. It's still the same premise. It's not a case of whether the like, these people have got billions, but someone's got multi millions. The premise is still the same. They're still spending money that otherwise they wouldn't have been able to spend. So because only, the which only happens from a takeover, and they bought a bunch of people from it. Did they buy the league? Who? Did Liverpool buy the league because they sold Coutinho and then spent money they didn't previously no, have it, on players business, that they though. didn't previously? Yeah, but it's not, not buying over. the league in the same. It's not, no, a takeover, it's not a takeover. Are they? No, but they're spending money that they previously the point didn't of what have. I'm saying. You specifically I'm saying said been... money they previously didn't have access to. No, I said which... they've been taken over. Yeah, and that's that the reason they're able to do what they're doing. But no matter who the owner is, no matter what the money is, it's it's all business. Like. People no, it's, are spending it's... money because everyone's got the same... Well, not everyone's got the same objective, but m- the big clubs have all got the same objective. The, the The objective is to try and win the league. And yeah. the only real way you're going to try and win the league is if you spend money because that is just how... I mean, less to prove that at wrong, the end of the but day. yeah. Okay, so one, one time yeah, out of how many years the Premier League's been going? Yeah. It's been one upset? Yes, because... Yeah, one because upset. The rest of the time, it's, it's by teams that have... Like pretty much had bought the league, so. But that year that Leicester won the league, that was just a very peculiar set of circumstances that opened it up for Leicester to be able to come in and swoop in and take the league in that sort of situation. Those are sort of like once in a blue moon kind of situations. Yeah, of course. But if you take that once in a blue moon situation, the normal process is. You buy players to try and win the league. Yeah. Yes. That's why Man United, through money, at likes of Cantona, Paul Pogba. Back in the day, like, when Pogba, they threw money at Cantona, yeah. they threw it. Uh, yeah. Many a player, they bought the league. Where, where does this morals of, are oh, they bought the league, come from? I personally welcome the fact there's more competition. I mean, if you it's not, it's not like mass... morals. You're, uh, um, what I was just saying is that that is the case when you've not done it through shrewd business of or business of 
building up players that are like um, like like selling clubs do, like a Southampton used to, like Norwich have done a little bit over years. They build players up and then sell them and make my, their money that way, keep themselves afloat. Um, it's 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 just someone buying the company who says, "Here we go. Here's an endless pit of money. You can now spend it." Like that's that's what that's what is different is that a lot, a lot of these um, other teams and um, Arsenal being one of them like didn't spend for ages because they wanted to get themselves into a better financial position and then they can then build eventually build to buy players but you had a few years there where Wenger wouldn't open the checkbook because they were trying to stay as as sort of afloat in the green as, as much as they could and then realised that basically they'd done it enough and they needed to go out and go and start buying some players if they wanted to compete but that's business that's different to being taken over by someone who's got an endless pit of money and going here we go they haven't sold anyone to get that money they haven't um made any you know made any money out of their youth players or out of um players that they've bought who have then become superstars to sell on it's from an injection from a rich conglomerate like the saudis that's what i'm saying that's what to me buying the league is it's not from being shrewd business people but Arsenal only was mainly selling players because of the pure fact that we had built a new stadium and we were having to pay off debt. Yeah, debt, yeah. It's yeah. more it's not because of the pure fact that it was like oh trying to stay in the green or something like that. Well it is, isn't if it? Because had, otherwise you'd have done well, yeah. both. You'd have not sort of um sacrificed the team side of things a little bit because that is essentially what happened. And instead you could have gone. Oh well, let's get the stadium, and also we'll buy some players. But then you just keep yourself in the in the in the deficit. You keep yourself in the red, don't you? And that wasn't your ethic. That wasn't what Arsenal wanted to do. And that's fine. That's what they wanted to do. That everyone for years, for like two or three years, there people were saying, "Oh, come on, just get your checkbook out, just sign some players." But that wasn't the club's ethic. There was no. We want to do these things first. This is our priority. We want to build the ground up. We want to stay in the green, and then when we've got the money, we'll go and buy the players. But with the likes of now a Newcastle or Man City before them or Chelsea with Abram- um, Abramovich, is all the money go, go and do all these things, and you know that is that is just how it is. Basically, long story short, I don't like this label of they bought the league because this and that and putting asterisks on league titles. I just I just don't like it. I don't think. What does it do? It's what trying to cheapen certain things that certain fans have. Well done. Like, no, I just don't see the fact. point that when, whenever, think, whenever someone, it, whenever you see a Man City fan trying to talk about something or a Chelsea fan or someone talk about anything, the first thing that gets burnt up is like, oh, oil club, oh, <coughs> bought the league, oh, it's like just discrediting them straight. It's like, grow up, just grow up. What do you mean, grow up though? I don't understand what you're saying. That is, that is, that is true though, it is a fact. Just it's because not, it, it's not... just because you view it as a fact. No, a fact it doesn't a fact. mean. I don't view it but as a fact. I, I see the way Chelsea did it is they used their youth system to build their money. They they kept getting all the youth and then set, selling them on for massive amounts of money. Man City is probably the exception. Yes, they did throw money at things like you just have to look at how much their squad costs and mm-hmm. stuff, and you don't tend to see much being sold. But well, and if they do, they take yeah, a loss, don't they? But, they never sell on for profit, if you know what I mean. Mm. But the Newcastle owners can't really do that because of the financial play. And as we have said before, because of what Mike Ashley did and the amount of money that we got left in the club after he left, two hundred. I think it was like equivalent of 280 mil that, that he could potentially spend. That's not because of the new owners. All the new owners are saying is that the manager or the board or whoever's making the decisions can go out and spend that. But it's not the Saudis going, right, here you go, here's the checkbook, now go out and spend with our money. They're, they're spending the club's money, and all the Saudis can do potentially to try and give them some extra money is doing sponsorship deals and new contracts that can give pump some money into the club. But it won't be like a billion pounds and then they can go right okay let's buy this guy for 200 mil this guy for 200 mil and stuff well like, yeah they can't on that because PSG. that is the financial fair play side of it isn't it yeah exactly so which is why that, like i, I say it will be buy. three years before they get to that point where we're looking at like haven't bought the league because you can't buy the league 
one year you, it, you, because of the financial fair play it will take mm. um, years to do that and through those years yes they will progress because every time they're going to increase their squad I mean we know that we know though from things when people mm. do buy big, better players and they start to build on their squad because they haven't they always constantly bringing in new players they don't always have that gel they don't always have that kind of mm. um, sort of camaraderie that sort of unity that squads have um, so they might not they might not necessarily kick on to like the likes that people will think but you would certainly think with enough I wouldn't say world class players but let's say top class players in three or four years time that they'll have in their squad um, that around that time I would imagine they'll be fighting in that in that top three bracket mm -hmm. and wouldn't that be down to shrewd bit business rather than necessarily pump it at just having really a rich owner wouldn't it be the picking of the manager the picking of the players that they're signing wouldn't it be like down to true business in that sort of sense rather than um, just winning the league just because they've got oil money no because they wouldn't have been able to do it unless they got that uh, they could have done it if it was a different owner regardless of the oil money or not I think it's that I think it's that thing though isn't it they've got that protection of the reason they can go out and say spend this money is because they've got that protection of being an endless pit of money. Whereas but like anybody no. else has has to have some sort of business in mind. No. Look at uh, look at Everton. Look at Everton, right? They started pumping and throwing money out left, right and centre over the last three seasons and look what happened last season. They were in a relegation fight. And that was because of the new owner being like, okay, here you go. And they don't have the protection. They've got a ridiculous wage bill. They've got... Uh, they're in a set situation where, in some ways, they do have to sell Richarlison to help reduce wage bill, help get some money to balance the books. And they can't go out and buy ridiculous uh, money, uh, some players now, because they don't have... They did bad business. Yeah. But they... Oh, yeah, I'm not saying that the necessarily the business that Newcastle could do is, is good. Like I said... They, they may buy all these people, but as a team, they might not gel. And there's no reason to think that they would necessarily get anywhere above mid-table next year because of the signings they're making. If a team don't play well as a team together, money is, is nothing, is it? Like we like we yeah. first saw when, when Man City did it, like, like we say, we, they, couldn't, they can't spend it all at once, so they have to... And it kind of, in, in a way, like that, that financial fair play helps that, I think, because... If they just went out, say you just went out and bought a brand new start on eleven, the chances of them getting on, and and knowing how each other plays and and winning the league off that is pretty slim, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. they don't have this camaraderie. They don't have this unless they all play for the Brazilian national team or whatever. You know, they don't have this camaraderie. They don't have this way of playing together. So it's better that the financial play, fair play stops that, so they can integrate players every f year. Got two or three, two or three players a year that are going to be starting eleven mm -hmm. players. Um, and definitely, I definitely agree that like a manager plays a big part in that. I unfortunately think that Eddie Howe, in two or three years' time, won't be the Newcastle manager um, because they'll then be at that point where they're then looking at those bigger players, that bigger stature of a club, that bigger, that Premier League title wins. And I think he will then find himself being replaced with a bigger manager because unfortunately he isn't at the moment. Um, this is his first kind of big test. Um, but it still only comes from that protection behind it of the money and like you say Everton tried to do it and tried to spend some money they don't have the protection behind it so now they've forced themselves into a corner of now they've got to do some things to try and get themselves back balanced whereas if Newcastle now go and buy all these players um, you know what was it was worth 38 million for um, Bruno Gomares and 42 million for their other player, whoever it was, I just saw. Um, if they lose, if they then next year don't get anywhere in near the expectations that they fought or where they wanted to be, it doesn't matter because there's an endless bit of money. Can't put the endless bit of money into the club though; breaks the financial fair play rules, and then they'll get penalised. Well, they'll be able to the on the new year, won't they? They'll be able to put more money on the new year. They just they just generate it through some dodgy deals, don't they? They use their own like sponsorship company that they own or something there's ways isn't there we know there's ways we've seen it happen uh, before yeah there's ways but they, but they can't just go here's a new sponsorship deal worth 500 million or something like that because that just 
glaringly looks too obvious. Yeah, it has yeah, to they be find, done in a tactical way. They find other ways, and no doubt some people take some backhanders or somewhere along the way, I imagine. But let's get back onto the track of uh, the part of where do you think they'll finish next season? So what position? Name I think name like, the position you think. We've seen like, like Bruno Gamares like seems to have really fit well into the Prem and the way that like they've played this year. Um, I still think it does depend on how many more signings they make towards the end and where they see those fitting. Because if they do buy, I think like Chris Wood is obviously is probably going to not be their main striker going forward. Um, mm-hmm. Callum Wilson found himself out of out of touch and he was injured. Was he towards the end? I think as well. Um, so I don't know. It depends if they get a if they get a, a striker as well. Maybe someone who could get them twenty goals a season. It could be. It's it's one to definitely. I'm I'm definitely interested in seeing it because having just a couple of premium signings like signings that are just that little bit above where they where they've been the last couple of years. Um, it would be. I'd just like to see how it where a team gels together or whether that creates holes in their team that other teams that have now been playing together for years sort of exploit so I, I, I at the moment I'd have to say mid table and then we'll see which side of that they sit we'll say 10th then yeah okay. I'll say about 10th Luke um, I'm thinking where, where do they finish this season hang on let's just let's just check because I think they finished top it half ninth? So I don't, I don't see him going backwards. Um, honestly, I can see them finishing seventh. I think they'll kick on a decent amount. They, they won't break the top six, I don't think. I, I can see it being seventh. So if United continue their decline that they're seemingly on, I know they're gonna mm. have they're gonna have Ten Hag in. Whether there's gonna be some teething issues, we'll see. Hmm. As for myself, I I'm sort of like trying to fit. I think they again they won't break the t- traditional sort of top six. Very few teams do that. Um, and then you've got to think Leicester, West Ham, and Newcastle are probably going to be on roughly an even keel probably next season. So it's a case of who's going to come out top of those. And I think, just to be a little bit different and not say the same answer, I'm going to say eighth. But that is it for this week's Q&A. Thank you for all the questions that were submitted in our Discord. This week I am going to post a link to our Discord on the FSB Twitter page and have that pinned so if anybody wants to be able to freely join into the discord you can just click on that and then that way you have an easier way of getting in and uh, submitting those questions and being part of our community and getting involved with the podcast but thank you very much everyone that has got to this part of the podcast and listening Brad and Luke thank you very much for participating in the podcast as always thank you no worries. And we will see you all next week. Goodbye. See ya.